Today we're going to go over how to make one of these. I will show you in a second here. So these are little orange shirts that we made with my students for Orange Shirt Day. And they're just little pins that you can wear in case you don't have an orange shirt for Orange Shirt Day. So I started out by making little kits for our students because they ended up having to go remote. And this is what our kit looks like. If you wanted to make your own little kit, it costs about $4 for all the little bit of supplies in here. And you have a piece of paper and a needle, of course, a beading needle, very important. A piece of Pelin or Flexi Firm, as it's called, and this can be purchased in any fabric store, really, in the interfacing area. Or just ask one of the workers and they will be able to show you where to get the pellin from. And you can cut it off just by a meter. They sell it in the meters. Just like fabric. It's just a piece of fabric. It's very firm. Hence the name Flexi Firm. So that's what we included in the kit. Along with a little piece of leather for backing. And mind you, these aren't very large. I'll give you a ruler just to show the, the size differentiation. Uh, okay, maybe this ruler's not the best, but it's about eight centimeters in length and about six centimeters in width, roughly. And then the leather is roughly the same size, a little bit less. And I included a little bobbin of beading thread. So this thread is black so that it shows up better on the video. But you can use white beading thread, and I specifically would suggest using beading thread, not like sewing thread. <clears throat> or there's another type of thread that you might find. It's called like a ni nylon cord type thread. Don't use that. Use the beading thread. And I included some Q-tips because along with that Q-tips, I also included a little pot of glue. And it's, this is a very specific glue that I included for my students. This is called E6000 glue, but you can use any other glue really other than super glue, as long as it's a kind of a thicker, tackier glue and it works on fabrics. This glue works really well on fabrics. I've also used the brand Goop. Goop glue works really well as well. And then it is a pin on the back. So we include a pin. This one's a bit longer. I think this is about an inch and a quarter. Uh, some of the shirts have an inch pin. And then of course, the important part, the beads. So a little baggie of orange, a little baggie of black. And that's what you use to start your shirt with. So we begin right from scratch, right from the design process. All right, so with the design process, this is why I included a piece of paper. And you're going to need a pencil for this part, so I don't include that. So for the design process, you're basically going to draw out your shirt. You don't want it to be too big, and you don't want it to be too little. So keep in mind that this is going to be the back of your shirt, of your pin. This is going to go on the backing like this. So this one is a light colored leather. I also have one with this dark colored leather. And that's what it's going to do. So you got to make sure that your shirt isn't going to be any larger than your piece of leather that you have there. All right. So keep that in mind when you're drawing it. And my camera is in such a way that I'm kind of upside down. So it's going to look like I'm drawing upside down right now. But I'll flip it when I'm done. So you're just going to draw your shirt. You're going to try and make it as uniform as you can. For this one, I gave it a bit of a curve for the neckline. Like the simpler the design, the easier to bead. There we go. Give it some shoulders and some arms. Come up the body portion. You want to try and make it as uniform as possible. Just like that. Now, I'm starting right from like designing your own shirt. You could always search the net and find a template and then 
and print out that template if you want and do your own shirt that way. <clears throat> but I think it gives a little or adds a little more authenticity <clears throat> to the creative process if it came straight from you. So this is my design for my shirt that I'm going to be using today. It's basic, just like this one. It's the same design. I don't really switch up my shirt design. There. So now once we have that done, you're going to need your thread and your needle. So for this part, I pull off about an arm's length, maybe a little bit more. So you can't really see too well with the camera, but I'm using my arm to measure. And then I'm going to snip it once I find my scissors, of course. Hey, snip. All right. So take your needle and your thread. And this is the reason why you want to make sure you're using beading thread, because this is a very tiny needle, a little tiny eye. I don't know if the camera can zoom close enough on that. And you need to get your thread through that very small beading eye. You know, you could use a metal threader, but I just do that. And it has to be beading thread because they're bonded. The fibers in the beading thread is bonded together. And if you use something like a sewing thread, <clears throat> when you try to thread your needle, chances are that your needle is going to split that thread. So make sure you have the proper type of thread to use for your project. And then tie off a knot. I just tie it like this. I just take the two ends and I just wrap them through. Whoops. I have a friend who has this unique way of winding it around the needle and then pulling the, the knot down, but I can't do that. I can't figure that out for the life of me. So I just do it the old way. Just do it that way. And double knot it just to make sure. Voila. Not. Okay. So we're going to have a little bit of a tail, but we'll cut that off after. Make sure that your needle is even, your thread is even all the way down your needle. Now you're going to take your pellet, <clears throat> your flexi fur, and I like to use the bend this way. And we're going to put your little shirt on here like this. Then you're going to come up from the bottom somewhere on the shirt. So I'm going at the corner of the shirt and I'm going to pull it through just like that and come down to this corner. And I'm basically just tacking on my design. This is a quick and easy way to tack it down. I'm just going to make a great big X right across my shirt. Just like that and up to the next corner. There, we have sewed our design down on the flexi firm. Now, if you don't want to use paper, you can draw your design directly onto the flexi firm. I use the paper um, because it gives a little bit extra stiffness, plus it's hard to erase on the pellet, and I tend to make mistakes when I'm drawing my design. <laughs> so it's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way when you're creating. It's totally onto the, on the creator. All right, so you can tie off a knot if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to continue using my thread the way I have it on here. And you don't have to worry what it looks like, what it looks like at the back. As you go along, as you beat, it's going to start looking like a big mess back here. And that's fine because that you won't see in the end product. Like as I said, we're going to cover it up with this leather. So you won't see that big beating mess at the back. All right, so now you have your shirt. You are good to go to bead now. So you're going to pull out your beads. All right, so you're going to need something to put your beads in. I'm just using a lid from one of my jars of beads. <laughs> I'm going to take all my beads and I'm going to pour them in there. And some people find it completely irksome that I have my beads mixed. Some people don't like mixed beads. I don't really mind. <laughs> but it's totally on you. That's just my quirk. I'm fine with it. Other people may not be. 
So I'll leave that in your hands. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the outside of the shirt first. So on this shirt, I will have done the black. So we're gonna do the black first. Just get your beads ready. Now we're gonna come up. There's a few different stitches I'm gonna teach you today in this tutorial. This first one is gonna be a bit of, it's a flat stitch. Okay, so I'm coming up right on my design because it's like coloring when we were little. And you would outline your color, your picture that you were going to color first with a dark color, and then you would shade it in after. So we're gonna be doing that same type of coloring concept, but we're using beads to do it instead because we're not small anymore. I mean, I love coloring, even though I'm not small. Okay, so for this first stitch, I'm going to string on enough beads to cover that whole line. So I want to estimate. I'm going to check, check the fit. There we go. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit closer so you can see maybe a little bit better. I'm thinking my camera is different. <clears throat> All right, so when I snug it up, you're gonna see that I have some space there. I wish I could zoom in better. The closer I get, the more you see my laptop. <laughs> but there is a space right there. I can fit maybe one more bead, and then there'll still be a little bit space there. So I'm gonna put on one more bead, maybe a thinner bead. Not all beads are completely uniform. You can find different shapes in your, different sizes in your package of beads. There we go. So it's very important that you leave a little bit of space. You don't wanna put enough beads on there to completely cover the entire lineup. You still have to leave a small amount of space. There we go. So in here, you can see I did leave some space. There's some space at the beginning where I strung the beads on. And there's a little tiny amount of space there. Now, this is the reason why you need that space. Because what we're going to do now, now that we have our beads down, we're going to do one stitch. So I'm going to come back maybe about the fourth or the fifth. So I have a total of nine beads on there. I'm going to come back around the fourth or the fifth bead. I'm using the same needle and thread. For this flat stitch technique, some people would use uh, two needles. I just use one. There, so I came up around the fourth bead, fourth or fifth bead. I'm gonna pull it all the way through, just like that. And I'm gonna stitch it down on the other side. So I'm putting my needle down on the other side of the beads. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to show you here. Get the angle right. So you can see that my thread is on this side and my needle is coming up on this side or going down on this side. There we go. I'm gonna pull it through just like that. There we go. And as you noticed when I pulled it through it separated the beads. It pushed them out. <clears throat> Alright so there we go. There's our first line of flat stitch feeding. So you can continue that process to complete your, your shirt. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit because I'm having trouble getting any of it. There we go. And I just use one needle. As I mentioned before, you can use two needles to do this. So what you would do in the two needle event, um, if you were doing it that way, you would use one needle to put the beads on, like this first step that I'm doing. And then the second needle would be the needle that you would bring to sew them down. And that works for a lot of people. I like to tangle my thread quite a bit. So, since I do that, I only I adapted this one needle technique because I kept crossing my threads all the time. There we go. So I've got seven beads on this time to cover my little arm. And I'm going to go down right there, just on the edge of my, my line. And I'm going to pull my needle through, just like that. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a frog in my throat today. I'm going to come back, and even though there's only seven, 
I'm still going to tack it down because this is a small little project. Come back up just like we did before with the same needle. So this would be the area where you would use a second needle if that was your kin, if that's what you wanted to do. And I'm going to pull this through, and there we go. And it did kind of push that out, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, you will find that when we start to fill in with the orange, it's going to start pushing these beads anyway. So they're all going to start looking nice and neat as we go along. <coughs> now this tutorial is for beginners. A lot of my students haven't beaded before. So if you are an experienced beater already, then by all means, share. Share your, your experience with others. Because sharing is caring, and it's also part of our culture. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pull this down. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish off my shirt outline. Just doing this. Just using this technique. So for that one, there was only three beads, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to come back and stitch it down. Those three beads are fine. And I'm going to come up. Alright, so I got to this point and I just wanted to show another type of stitch that I use when I'm doing a, a um, an outline. So I've come to this curved line and this other type of stitch, I don't fully know what the what you would call the stitch, I just call it like a back stitch because you have to come back and go through the bead. So I'll show you what I mean. So this type of stitch I use, I actually use it quite often. I don't mind the flat stitch, but sometimes this stitch I can do faster and it uses less thread. So if I'm in like really hurting for thread, I'll use this stitch because you don't have to come and stitch it down. Okay, so I use the same technique that we've been using so far. I string on my beads, but instead of covering the whole line, this time I'm only going to string on five. One, two, three, four, five. Peak, nisu, nisu, ne nan. My language. Okay. So now I'm going to snug this up tight. So I'm going to try not to leave any line, any room this time. I'm going to follow along my neckline. Just like that. And I'm going to snug it up tight with my needle and I'm going to push it through. There we go. So that's the same so far, other than the fact that I didn't cover the whole line. So I'm going like this. I'm going to come up behind that back bead, this last bead that I strung on. So that's where I went down with my needle and thread. Now I'm coming up just behind that final bead, just like that. So I'll kind of zoom in here a bit so you can see where I'm coming, just behind that final bead that I strung on. And I'm going to pull my needle through, and this is the back stitch part. This is where I come in from the back of this bead to come out through the front, just like that. So from the back, behind the bead, out to the front or the open area, if you want to call that the front. For me, I'm calling it not the front. Some people might call it the back. But I'm going through the back of the bead where it's touching the, the second last bead. And I'm coming through the front where it doesn't touch any bead. And I'm going to pull my needle all the way through, just like that. And then I'm going to finish off my neckline that way. And that's what I call a back stitch. I don't know what the proper name for it is. That's just. A sherryism, I suppose. <laughs> so I'm going to string on another five beads. One, two, peak nisu nisu neo nenan. I'm Cree for those who don't recognize the numbers. 
Plains Cree to be exact. So once again, I'm going to snug this up in the heel way. And I'm going to push that down after I snug it up. I'm going to put it down right on the line where I want it to go through. Hmm, I have a bit of shadow there, sorry. And I'm going to pull through just like that. Now, once again, here's that last bead. I'm going to come up from behind oh, on the side of it just like that. So you can see it. Pull my needle all the way through. Then I'm going to go behind the bead where it touches that second last bead. I'm going to come through where it's open and doesn't touch any beads. And I pull my needle through. And, I'm going to, and that's going to stitch it down just like that. There. And I think I can fit maybe six beads on right here. One pack, ne su, ne stu, ne wo, ne nun, ne kutwa shik. One, two, three, four, five, and six beads. And is it enough? Uh, actually, I can do one more. So, tape a cope. Seven. Seven beads. I actually won't do seven beads. <clears throat> I think that's a little too much. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off three and I'm just going to string on five. For this stitch, the longer it is, the like it's the, the more beads you put on there, it can bulk up. Like it can, instead of laying flat, it'll look bumpy. That's why I'm taking off those beads and I'll do those ones separately. And then once again, I'm going to come up through the back of that bead or beside the bead, just on the line. <clears throat> then I'm going to go through the back to the front, with my needle, and I'm going to pull through. Just like that. Then I'm going to put on three beads to finish it off and then I'll tie it off and that will be done. I'll be done my lining. I'll be done my outlining, I should say. Just like that and it's going to rest nice. See? So just three beads. It's going to rest perfectly just on that final line. And it's going to go down. Ta -da! And the outline of my shirt is all complete. And to finish it off, now if you don't like tying knots, you can always finish it off by coming back up and beading your thread through the beads. I don't have enough enough thread to do that, and I'm, I do don't I don't mind that way because then you don't have to tie knots. But I'm going to tie this knot off. I'm gonna hold that with my nail to keep that knot close to the flexi firm. And pull it through. I just about don't have enough thread to tie a knot. And like I said, this is for beginners, so some of those techniques you can learn as you go along, as you get better. That's good enough. So a double knot is good. I'm just going to snip it. Just like that. Ta-da! So, we have completed the outline of our shirt. Now, when you do this neckline, you don't have to use that stitch. I just wanted to demonstrate that stitch for you. For the students, I would like you to attempt that stitch just to get a feel for it. And then um, it's up to you whether you want to use that stitch or whether you want to use the flat stitch that we used around the outside of it. So that is the outline. I'm going to start on my orange background. So this time, this is another stitch I'm going to show you. This third stitch is called a lazy stitch. <clears throat> it's just called a lazy stitch. And the reason it's called a lazy stitch is because it's fast, really fast, quick and easy. So it's going to start, well, I'm going to start down here on the corner, just like this. Just pulled it up inside my beads this time, inside my little outline. Now from here, I'm going to string on only five. You don't always have to do your lazy stitch in five, but this is a small um, project. It's not very large, so five is what I'm going to go with. It'll make it look nice and neat. So I'm going to snug it up again, just like we did. So we've done this technique already. Snug it up, leave no space, and then go down. Just like that. Pull it all the way through. There. So far, it's the same as what we've been learning. This is the part where it's a little different. So, 
I just went down right here to the other side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my needle and I'm going to come up just to the left, to the right. I don't know. It depends on <laughs> your perspective on the screen, I suppose. On my screen, it looks like I'm coming up on the left side of it. So I'm just coming up on the left side of where I already went down. So I went down right there, and I'm going to come up just to the left of it right there with my needle. I'm going to pull it all the way through. Oh, I got a bit of a knot there. I'm just going to undo my knot. Whoops. Throw my shirt around a bit while I do it. Just kidding. Okay, there we go. Pull it tight. There. So I came up just to the left of those beads. Now I'm going to string on another five. Pull it all the way down. And you'll see that when I lay it down next to it, they're roughly the same size. Your beads are going to be pretty uniform in size. So that's why we come up to the left. Try to make it even, as even as you can when you're coming up on the left side. Your two little stitches should be relatively side by side with just a bit of a space between them to make room and allow for space for your beads to lay down nice and flat beside this first, this first stitch of beading. So now that we have our beads on, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put my needle through down here, just to the left of the bottom of that stitch. Then I'm going to pull it through and it will lay flat right beside your first stitch. And there you have it. That is your lazy stitch. So rather than beading upwards, like we have been with the flat stitch and the back stitch, with the lazy stitch, we bead on the side. So again, I'm going to come up on the left side of where I went down. So I went down underneath right there. I'm going to come up right beside it with a little bit of a space to allow for the room of the beads. Again, I'm going to string on five beads. Five beads. Lay them flat. Snug it up a little. And go down. Right beside my last stitch. There. I know some really skilled bead workers who use only a lazy stitch and they are some of the fastest bead work bead workers I know. So I'm just going to continue doing my my lazy stitch. I'll probably just forward the video faster. You can always go back to where you need to to get some instruction on how to do it. Or just continue on to. Second row, as you notice, I started a second row on top using the lazy stitch. So we started here and we moved this way. And then I started up here again and I'm going to go back this way. And when you're doing the second row, when you're coming up on top of your first row, make sure it's kind of tight, kind of snug right up to the beads underneath. Because the idea is to give that illusion that they're right on top of each other, but they're nice and uniform. So I'm coming up right on top of that bead, almost like even through the thread of that bottom stitch of beads.
And don't worry if you make your stitch too long. Like in this one, you can see I made my stitch a little too high up. When you come back around to do this top row again, using the lazy stitch, <clears throat> you can come up close and snug it up with your bead when you're coming up from the for the for the other row of beads. So don't worry about it too much. I'm trying to bring my needle up a little bit higher. There we go. Because I'm using my own judgment call on whether my next row of beads is going to need that same amount of space as that other stitch. Or whether it'll be too much. So it was, I did need that same amount. It was not, it was too much for this stitch, but it's just right for this stitch. And the reason for that would be because of the way the first row lays down and the, and the size of the beads in that first row. So don't re, don't readjust your stitching here. Keep it all on the same level, regardless of whether it's too big or too small. Because if, if I had adjusted my stitch to come up where it originally was trying to come up right there, it would have been too small to put on those five beads. And right now it doesn't really matter that I'm using five beads. Like I could have brought it up there, brought my needle through where it kept on trying to come through and just put those four beads on rather than five to make up for that space. But it does matter when you have a more intricate detailed pattern. Let's say you have a pattern or I have a pattern right here and it follows a set number of beads. I need to have those five beads on my stitch, not four. That's why it's important to ensure you maintain the right amount of uh, spacing right here. So even though these are a little, a little, um, they're smaller than this row, and the stitch is a little wide there, I'm going to make up for that eventually in the next, the next row, and that'll happen because beads just, they're not perfect. They're they're as perfect as they can can be, but they're not absolutely perfectly round or all the same shape. They're all different shapes and all different sizes. So your beadwork will be, you just have to learn to be to compensate for those different shapes and sizes. There, so I am still maintaining that same distance with my, my stitching on top. And the beads are still lining up nice the way I'd like them to. And it's better to have more space there than less <clears throat> because, like I said, you want to maintain five beads on your pattern rather than changing up the width of your stitch and then taking having to not have enough space and removing a bead. There, see that ended up being the perfect amount for that last stitch. It fits on there just nice. So keep in mind that as you're beading, you're also constantly evaluating the amount of space and where to put your next stitch. So that one I put a little bit lower. But I think it'll still work out because these these five beads fit nicely in there and this row seems to be a little bit lower. So I can put five larger beads on maybe to compensate for that additional space that I, I've identified there. And when I say larger, I'm talking like not centimeters larger or inches, but like micromillimeters <laughs> larger than the other ones. And those micromillimeters, they add up when you're doing small projects like this, especially in beadwork. 
Uh-oh. So just take your time and be patient, especially if you get a little bit of a knot like that. There. I just used my needle to sort it out. So as you can see, <clears throat> I'm almost on my little shirt here. And you can see why I told you you don't have to worry too much on your outline on whether it was straight or not, because as I filled it up, I my beads would push and ensure that my lines became straight on the outside. So now I'm just going to finish off beading this top part and then we'll get on to the next step. Alright, so as you can see, <clears throat> I attempted to maintain my stitched length and I do have some little space here so I'm going to just go back and I'm going to fill in those spaces with however many beads it takes to fill it in. So in this little area right here, it's probably only going to take one, one or two. So in this, in this instance, I could have just strung on an extra bead and put it there, but I had been stressing so much about maintaining your length of beads, the amount of beads that you put on there, that I decided, ah, I'll just leave it. And then this particular stitch right here, I don't know if you can see, I actually made my stitch too short. And this is what it looks like when you make it too short. Your bead doesn't want to lay flat properly because it's trying to lay on its side rather than up. Because there's not enough space for it to lay up. So in that case, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my back stitch to correct it when I put on that, that extra bead right there. So I'll show you that when I get there. Right now, I'm just going to fill in this these areas and make my way towards that spot. So you're going to use your best judgment on how much beads to put on to fill in these gaps. So there, I just put on two. I'm going to use my best judgment here. I'm going to try not to push my my line out of, like my black outline out of shape. And here I think I might be able to squeeze on two thinner beads. So I'm going to actually root around and see if I can find two smaller, aka thinner beads. And like I said before, the beads aren't all perfect. So you should be able to find two thinner beads if you have a spot like that there mine might actually be a little maybe a little too thick but i'm still going to use them so this is what i'm going to do here i put on my two beads and because i think it might be just a little too thick i'm going to do like a opposite back stitch i'm going to go into the back of this bead here or the stitch i'm going to put my needle through just like that if you can see it right there. I went through the front and I'm coming out of the back of that bead in that stitch on the ed end of that row and when I pull it through my two beads that I'm stringing on should lay flat in theory if I didn't make a mess of my thread. 
So try not to make a mess of your thread. <laughs> I just did. <gasps> my bad, my bad. I'm sorry. So I'm just going to use my needle to fix my thread. There we go. Then I'm going to pull it through, and there we go. It laid flat. Those two beads that I just stitched on are flat, and my thread is coming through this, this bead that's already on. And then I'm just going to go down right by the behind that that bead that I came through with my needle and pull it tight there and then they all line up nice and even so I'm probably going to actually do that for the rest of these bit beads just to keep them because some of them I did make my stitches a little too short so I'm going to use the back stitch on these ones I'm going to go through the back of that bead come out through the front or the top, depending on your perspective. That will help to keep that bead laid flat. I'm going to string on how many beads I think it'll take to cover that space. So this time I think there's I'm going to need three. So I'm going to put three on. There we go. So it looks like it's going to fit nice. Might be a little big, but I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go down right in my shoulder corner there. And I'm going to pull it through. There, and it did push it just a little bit. But it still looks good. It's not completely out of out of line. So. so I'm going to do that for the rest of them. I'm going to come back and do a back stitch through this bead here. So I come up behind it. Put my needle through the bottom and up through the top of that last bead. And then I'm going to stitch on two beads this time because my guesstimate is that it will take two beads to cover this little area. And it looks to be about correct. I think I could squeeze another one on, but I think it might put it out of shape. So I'm not going to. And then I'm going to stitch it down just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of those. And that's how I'm going to correct that one stitch that I'm trying to make my way to. I'm going to go through the back, or the bottom, come up through the top, make it tight, and I think I can squeeze on two beads there. Yep, it'll fit nice. Go down, just like that. There we go. I'm just going to continue doing that all through the end of these beads. Up through the back of my next bead. Come from the bottom up through the top, just like that. Go tight. And in here, I think I'm just going to do one now, just to fill that gap. One larger one if I can find one. This one, it looks like I used a large stitch there, so I think I might actually be able to squeeze on two larger beads. See? So going through that back stitch, I was able to push that bead back, and it revealed more of that larger stitch. So I'm going to cover that large stitch up with two beads. I'm pretty sure I can squeeze two beads on there. Two thinner beads. Or maybe I was wrong. Maybe I can only do one bead. Let's see here. Oh, I got it on there. There we go. So it is in there. And now I'm finally at that bead that I wanted to correct. So I'm going to use that method that I just showed you to correct it. I'm going to come up behind that bead that doesn't want to lay properly. And I'm going to go through its back, come out the front, or the bottom, come out the top, depending on your perspective. There we go. And for that one, I'm just going to put one bead on. I'm 
There we go, and I corrected it. Now you would never know that that stitch was not long enough. Some of them down here are starting to pop up, and that's one of the pitfalls of the lazy stitch sometimes. It likes to bubble. Your work will like to bubble. But that can occur with any of the, the stitches that I showed you. It just depends on how well you spaced your stitches. So I'm starting to run out of thread here. I'm going to have to re-thread my needle really quickly. So for this one, this was another one where there was a little bit of extra space. I can see my lar long stitch there. So in my estimate, I'm pretty sure I can put two thinner beads on there. I'm going to root around and find two thinner beads and squeeze them on there. And yeah, it'll fit on quite nicely. So I'm just going to tie off my thread because it's getting kind of short. Make it a little difficult to do my, my knot. And that's the nice thing about the lazy stitch. The other part to the lazy stitch is that when you look at the back of your stitch work, it's not as messy as say using the two needle or the one made the, the tack down method, the flat stitch. See, here's the flat stitch. It would make rows like that of lots of thread, but the lazy stitch just makes neat little stitches across like this. So when you're working on something like moccasins on leather, where you aren't putting a backing on it, these little small stitches make for a neater, a neater back. All right, so for here, I am going to switch up my stitching a little bit. I think I'm going to move back to the flat stitch to finish this little part off, just because it's a little bit longer right here, and then I can go back to the regular lazy stitch right there. So here I strung on six beads, and that covers that quite well. So as an artist creating your own beadwork, there is no right or wrong way that you absolutely have to do things, right? You do what you need to to get the desired effect that you would like. So for me, I'm going to stitch this down just so that it doesn't bulk up, bubble up. So I did one stitch, just to stitch in between those three. I split it by threes. So three on top and three on the bottom. And then I might need to do that for the rest of it. If not, I can just string on five beads and then it should be good. So once I lay my bead down, I see I have a little bit of space there. So I'm going to actually do six again. So this is going to be a little bit crooked. It, it's going to come out a little bit like this, and I don't mind that. I'm fine with that. I don't know. Maybe some perfectionists out there won't like that. But like I said before, as long as you're okay with it, and whoever decides to wear the pin is okay with it, then it's good. So because I use six stitches, I'm going to tack it down. Also because it is a little bit angled there, so I just want it to stay in its place. So I put that one little stitch in there. Just to make sure that it doesn't move around.
So when you're getting down to the end like this, it is a lot of guesswork on how many beads to put in there. So if I put four in, it's going to push my line out a little bit. So rather than four, I'm just going to use three. I'm going to string off one. That bead. And I'll just go with three so that it doesn't make my outline a too big. So it did push it a little bit when I did that, but not so much so that it's uneven. And then when I got to this point, I did put three there too, so it is pretty even. Yay! That means my pattern was somewhat equal on both sides. And then I'm going to put one bead on just to finish off that last corner. Like that. So from here, I'm going to tie off my knot. Now, with your shirt, you're going to need scissors. Or, if you're a little bit more advanced, although if you're watching this, since it is a beginning tutorial, I doubt <laughs> you would be more advanced. So you probably won't have the tool, but there is an X-Acto knife that you can purchase and it makes it easier to cut it nice and close around the area where you want it to cut. Now, when we're going to cut this out, you want to make sure you don't snip your stitches. So just be aware of where you're cutting when it, now that we're going to trim our shirt out. So I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start down here. I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure, yep, I'm good. I didn't snip my stitches. I got pretty close, but I didn't snip them. And the way I do it is I just do it in chunks like that. There, remove that chunk. And I got really, really, really close to that stitch, but I didn't snip it. And I am left-handed, so it's a little different. Make sure I didn't snip my stitch. Okay. okay, so for here, my neckline, I'm just going to cut it straight across for now and then work on the angle after. That. Cut my sleeve. Make sure I'm not too tight to my stitch, just about, but I'm still good. But I didn't snip it. If you do snip it, there is a way to fix it. Maybe I should snip one on purpose so I can show you. Oh, even when I'm trying to snip it, I still don't. So I do want to get rid of this little etching. This is why an X-Acto knife is much more helpful when snipping a tiny little project like this. You really have to make sure your scissors are sharp on the edge and the tips. There we go. I'm going to clean up this neckline. I'm left-handed, so it's a little bit difficult. I'm just going to clean it out in snips and chunks like that. There. So I ended to, I would end it, <laughs> I managed to do it without snipping any of my stitches. Usually I snip at least one, so I was kind of counting on that so I could show you. Alright, so I'm going to clean it up a little bit. 
because there is quite a bit of white showing through. But, you know, you don't have to clean it up either. That might make it easier for you to edge stitch it if you do leave some white on there. I, however, prefer to clean it up. So I'm going to flip it around so I can watch to see how close to the stitches I'm getting. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit on these edges. Now you have a nice trim little orange shirt all ready to put it on the back. All right, so now I'm going to take my backing and my pin and a pen for this next step. I put my shirt onto the little piece that I'm going to use for the backing. Just like this. Push it down. Take my pen or my pencil, something to that will show up on your leather. Right. There we go. So that's going to be the back of my shirt. Well, this is actually going to be the back of my shirt. Hmm. There is a rough side and a good side to a piece of a leather. I should have put that on the other side. Oh, well, it's okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to measure out where my pin is going to be. I want my pin to go through right there. So now I'm going to take my pen and I have a bulky part here and a bulky part here on my pin. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. So I'm going to make a mark here on this side of the bulky part and this side of the little bulky part. Hopefully it shows through. And then the same with this one. Make a mark here, a mark here. There we go. Then I'm going to join my two marks. A little bit of a line, like this. There. So that's where my pin is going to poke through. Now, hopefully your scissors is sharp enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it on those two marks. So I'm basically just taking it, it was like this, pull it up and fold it like that. And I don't know about your scissors, but my scissors tends to keep its sharpness down where it's not used as much. Just further down, further down the edge down here. If you're, if you have a nice sharp scissors, you could probably use anywhere on your scissors. You don't need to do it like this, but mine, I have to kind of put my scissors further back. So I'm going to snip it further back, but I'm not going to cut it all the way. I'm just going to make a snip, just enough to make a hole on that line that I created. I'm going to do that to the other one. Just a bit of a snip so that there's a hole. There we go. So this one looks like it's the right length. This one looks like it's a little short. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to open it up a little just by sliding my blade in. Hopefully your scissors is sharp enough that when you slide your blade in, it's gonna cut it. So mine did slice it. There we go. So now the next part is I'm gonna open up my pin very carefully so I don't poke myself. More than likely, I will eventually poke myself. I always do. So this particular bar pin has a little piece sticking out. So I want to make sure I try and get that through the hole as well. So here is where you can correct it if you want to. You can put it through on this side. And then we'll put the glue on this side. Or you can, or you might want to hide your, your pen mark, your pen lines. So I want to hide my pen lines. So I'm going to push this through, whoops, I'm putting it backwards. I'm going to push it through this way with the big long piece to stick through. And I'm going to get that, that other part of the pin through as well. There we go. And I pushed it through. Then I'm going to turn it so that I can get the other part of the bar through. And I pushed it through. Perfect. There you go. So my pin is on. 
Now for now, so I don't poke myself while I'm working, I'm just going to close it up. Come out. There. And that is going to be the back of my, my shirt. This part we're still working on right here. Okay, so the next step, you're going to grab your glue and a Q-tip. Like I said, remember, these are in your kit. If you have a kit from the school here, and if you made your own kit, this is what you would have put in it. I'm going to flip this shirt around. I'm going to take my little pot of glue. Which one did I open? I think this one. There we go. I'm going to take my Q-tip and I'm going to get a good dollop of glue. <laughs> Mine came out like this because I put, put glue into little paint pots. So it's slowly starting to dry out inside these paint pots. <laughs> so it's a little bit more dry than usual. Usually this is pretty thin and a little bit runny, but it's already kind of thickening up. I think if I was to use my nail, it wouldn't even, it's still tacky. It's still going to hold its tackiness though. So that's the good thing. So for this part, I can actually just use my finger because of the, how tacky the glue is getting. <laughs> But if you're using fresh E6000 glue, I can actually show you some fresh stuff. So this is what it'll be like when it's fresh. Clear and drippy and goopy. It's like this. The tacky stuff still works. Like the thicker stuff, if it's been sitting for a bit in a pot, it still works. Because it's still tacky. But this is the other stuff, and this is where you would use your Q-tip to spread it on. <laughs> and this is what I was saying, you don't have to worry about your stitches so much on this part. And I'm going to put some on this pin. I'm going to put it underneath the pin. that get it all in there and I'm gonna put some on the top of the pin just like that and that's gonna help keep that pin from moving around I'm gonna take my shirt and I'm just gonna push it on following the outline that I created I'm just going to use my fingers and push it. And I'm going to open my pin up for this part of it because I want it to be nice and flat. I'm going to push that glue out. And you don't have to worry if that glue starts to come out of your, your little cuts that you made here for your pin. Because it's going to dry on clear. It's going to go clear. Wow! My pin broke. That wasn't supposed to happen. How did that happen? Oh, okay. It can just go back in there after. I can do that after. That actually makes my, <laughs> that makes it so much more easier with that piece of the pin off the way. <laughs> so I'm just going to push out all that glue inside there. Push it towards the edges. I'm going to start in the middle and push with my fingers out, outwards. There. And once I have that done, I'm going to have a look. I'm going to see where it's not sticking down. I'm just going to touch that up with the glue. Just like this. Put a little doll up there. Like that. 
that'll stick good. Uh, put a little dollop here. I'm going to check out this side and it eats some on the edge here. I'll put some more there. And spread it out. Oh, well, maybe this edge too. There, and then I'm just going to push it like that. The good thing about this glue is you don't really need to wait for it to cure. Like, you can just continue right on working with it if you wanted to. I'm just going to clean it up a little. Just because I do want to... I'm going to have to snip after, so... Pull out some of that glue that's there. And there's some glue in here that came through. I'm just going to clean that up a bit. And there's some here. There we go. So now you can wait and let it dry if you want. I'm always in a rush to do things, so I'm just going to continue on. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep working even though my glue is still still tacky and not yet dry. Hmm. Okay. So now you're gonna do the same thing that you did when you cut your shirt out, but this time you're just gonna snip the leather off. So from here, I'm going to grab my thread. Now, if you like your shirt like this, it's perfectly fine to be done at this point. But I like to give it a little bit of a finished look. So when you get to this point, you can see a bit of a difference in the finished look on it. This one has an edging on it. That's the difference. And depending on your glue and the strength of it, um, Putting that edging on will give it that additional strength that it needs to ensure that the backing stays on. <laughs> so, let's begin. I'm going to do is just go through, well actually I'm going to trim it a little bit right here. I don't like how much leather is sticking off right here. There we go. So it's trimmed up. Okay, now I'm going to begin. I'm going to start on this little shoulder. I'm going to start at the back. I'm going to go through my leather. Then I'm just going to go through the edge of the white flexi frame. So I'm just going to zoom in a little so you can see that. So I just went through the back of the leather and up through the edge of the flexi frame. And I didn't go through my beads. I'm on the edge. I'm on the outside edge of my beadwork right here. I'm not actually through them. I'm going to pull my needle through, just like that. So yeah, I am going to have a bit of a knot here, and there's a way where you can do it where there's no knot. But for beginners, this is good enough. So now you're going to take your black beads, or whatever color you feel like edging your shirt in. It doesn't have to be black, but that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use these black beads to edge it. And I'm only, I'm only going to string on three. Three beads for this edge. It's a quick and easy edge. And then I'm going to do just exactly what I just finished doing with that first stitch. I'm going to go through the back of the leather and come up through the white flexi firm just on the edge beside my beads. Just like that. And I am going to put a little bit of a space there. So here's my actual stitch and where it came out. And there is some space between where I'm coming in and where I came out with my thread. 
And I'm going to push it up like that and snug my beads up tight. There, and then from this side, this is what it looks like. And I've got one, one stitch on. I'm going to continue that all the way around, maintaining roughly the same space between each stitch as I can to try and keep it as uniform. Now, some people might actually put them closer together to make it a closer edge stitch, and that's fine. That looks really good, too. It all depends on aesthetics at this point, on how you want your edging to look. Sometimes it also depends on how much time you have. The closer they are, the more stitches you need to do, the less time you have to do it. So if you have some a little bit of extra time on your hands, put them close together. Makes a really nice edged look. And I'm going to use my nail or my finger and snug, it, snug that up to the front, just like that. And just continue doing that whole technique all the way around. So as you're going around the edges, when you come to something sharp around, like where you have to bend, you can try and maintain that same space, but it might not work out. I was going to say, as you bead and you're pushing through that glue, your needle might get a little tacky, so make sure you're cleaning your needle off as you go along, too. It'll make it a little tough to string beads on if you don't. Make sure you're catching both the edge of the leather and the flexi firm and that you're not coming up through your beadwork on that you did on your shirt. You just want to do it on the edge. Okay, so we are almost done. I'm just going to finish off with maybe three stitches here. And then I will show you how to finish it off. So there is a way where you can finish it off without tying a knot. But I'm just going to tie off a knot, essentially. I'm going to do it probably near or on top of that first knot that I did. Just like this. Pull it through. So for this final stitch, because this is going to be the last one that I, I put on with beads, it's going to come through on that side, just like that. Actually, I think I can put one more on. There's a bit of a gap there. So. All right, so this is going to be my final stitch with beads. Push it through. Like that. There. So my edging is done. Now I'm just going to end it off. So I'm on the wrong side, like I'm on the right side of the beadwork, and I don't want to tie my knot there. I don't want to end it off there. So I'm just going to take my, my needle and I'm going to go through on this side. I'm going to use it like if if this was a little off, if it was a little loose, then I would use it, use this opportunity to, to do one extra stitch just to put it in its place. But it's not, so I'm just going to go like this, and it's going to stitch down between those two. There we go. And now I'm on this side. Now I can tie off my, th my thread. And I'm going to try and get as close to the leather as possible. So I just use my nail. Oh, I really don't want that caught around my... There we go. So I'm going to use my nail to push it through, push it down, and pull it tight. Again, just to double knot it, just to make sure. Oh, 
again, I got a cut all over my pin head there. Of course, if you have longer thread, it'd be much easier, but I ended up with not as much thread left at the end. Snug it up as tight as I can. Use my nail to keep it there and pull it tight. There we go. Now I'm just going to snip it. And there you have it, your completed orange shirt. As I was going, I noticed that this is bubbling up a little right here. And that's because of the lazy stitch. Sometimes that's what happens with a lazy stitch. They tend to bubble like that. So I didn't uh, pull, it, pull it tight enough or maybe my knot slipped through. But that's an easy fix. I could always just take a needle and thread, or when I came here, where I was working on my edging, I could have did an extra stitch and just tack that down and then continued on with my edging. I was gonna do that, but by the time I noticed that it was bubbling up, I was already right here, actually. So I didn't wanna leave a big mess back here. But you can totally go back and fix that, if it's bothering you. It's actually kind of bothering me, I might go back and fix it later. <laughs> so there you go. That is your tutorial for how to do an orange shirt, a beaded orange shirt for Orange Shirt Day. So I'll be fixing this later and it will be all done and good to go. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, just post them or ask them or email me, whichever works for you. I'm always available. And yeah, so good job and good luck beating.